The NBA season will be here before you know it, and with the dust mostly settled on off-season movement, we have a pretty good idea of what teams will look like when the 2021-2022 schedule tips off. That means NBA bettors are starting to look at season win totals, so we thought we'd do the same. Relax, grab a notepad, and take this in. Before we get to some of the league's most interesting win totals from a betting perspective, I'm asking you to bet on us here at The Score. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, tell your friends to do the same, and help us get over the 100,000 mark. An important thing to keep in mind when talking about win totals is that these are not Vegas' predictions for the NBA season. Win totals are set with the intention of finding a sweet spot for each team that will end up with bets on the over and under split roughly 50-50. With that in mind, let's take a look at some of the numbers. The Nets have the highest win total number wherever you look, with a range of 54.5 to 56.5 depending on the book. Traditionally, the best teams in an 82 game campaign clear 60 wins, and if the Nets stay healthy, they should cruise to the league's best record. But that's a big if. Kevin Durant missed half of last season a year after a torn Achilles injury kept him out of the entire 2019-20 campaign. Kyrie Irving hasn't cracked the 70 game mark in five years and has missed an average of 28 games per 82 contests over the last four seasons. Plus, the championship or bus nets will clearly be prioritizing postseason glory over regular season success. The Lakers win total ranges from 51.5 to 53.5, and, and like the Nets total, should be a pretty safe over if they stay healthy, specifically if LeBron James is healthy. With LeBron on the court and even Anthony Davis off last season, the Lakers still posted a net rating that would have ranked second overall behind only Utah. But James has missed significant chunks of two of the last three seasons, and he isn't getting any younger. Though if nothing else, perhaps Russell Westbrook's arrival and ball dominance means less wear and tear on the King. The Warriors win total is a pretty consistent 48 and a half across all sports books. The last time we saw all of Steph Curry, Draymond Green, and Klay Thompson together for a regular season without Durant, the Warriors reeled off an NBA record 73 wins. Of course, that was a half decade ago, and who knows what Thompson will look like by the time he returns to action in December after two and a half years off due to devastating knee and Achilles injuries. The Blazers at 43.5 or 44.5 are probably a team you want to stay away from at this point unless you're absolutely confident about how you think the Damian Lillard saga will play out. If you envision Dame in another jersey at any point this season, this might be the easiest under in the league. I'm on it. The Grizzlies broke through as a playoff team last year after a regular season that would have prorated to a 43 win campaign over 82 games yet their win total sits slightly lower this year between 41 and 42. It might be tempting to simply place your faith in John Morant and smash the over on Memphis after they hit the over in each of Morant's first two seasons. But keep in mind that at least on paper, Memphis took a step back this summer with more of a long-term vision. Plus Dylan Brooks and Kyle Anderson now find themselves in trade rumors. Another team around the 500 mark when it comes to win totals is the Knicks, with a range of 40 and a half to 41 and a half. On one hand, Evan Fournier plus the buy low acquisition of Kemba Walker raises the ceiling of a surprising team that would have won 46 games in an 82 game season last year. But based on both the quality of their own shots and the expected results of the shots they gave up last season, New York drastically overachieved. It's the Knicks! Go the Knicks! Whoa! The Raptors missed the playoffs for the first time in eight years last season, finished with the league's seventh worst record, lost Kyle Lowry in free agency, and have Pascal Siakam currently rehabbing from shoulder surgery. So 36 to 38 wins might actually seem optimistic. But given the unprecedented nature of the Raptors' displaced season from hell in Tampa, it's possible there's nothing to take from Toronto's 2021 campaign, a season that did see them climb to fourth in the Eastern Conference midway through the year before a COVID outbreak. It's not surprising, but it's still damn weird to see the Spurs preseason win total hovering around 28 or 29 wins. If the now derozan Spurs fail to crack the 30 win mark this season, by the way, it would be the first time since 1997, a disastrous campaign that led to Pop taking over coaching duties and the drafting of Tim Duncan. The Pistons at 24.5 or 25.5 wins might hold some low-key value on the over. As Detroit adds NBA-ready number one pick Cade Cunningham, 
plus the Canadian trio of Kelly Olynyk, Corey Joseph, and Trey Lyles to an already intriguing young core of Jeremy Grant, Sadiq Bey, Killian Hayes, and Isaiah Stewart. If you prorate last season to 82 games, you would only need the Pistons to improve by two or three wins this year to cash in on the over. Lastly, Oklahoma City intrigues me with the NBA's lowest win total at 22 and a half or 23 and a half. Oh no, we suck again. No team is tanking more blatantly than the Thunder, and it's possible OKC finds creative ways to keep its best players out of games if the team looks surprisingly competitive again. But Shea Gilgis Alexander is the real deal. If he's healthy, and the Thunder let their $172 million man play all season, SGA alone might be able to drag this sad sack team to at least 24 wins. So what do you think? Does an obvious over or under stand out to you? Did we miss a team you think others should know about? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe.